Okay, let's carry on with this developing of a phase diagram. Now, first of all, we're going to look at the equivalent circuit, where we have the induced EMF, the voltage, the current flowing, and then IAZS will drop. And that is our equation. E angle delta is V angle zero plus IAZS angle beta plus or minus phi. Now, if we look at the cylindrical alternator, the first step is draw the voltage phaser, as this is the reference phaser. Second step, draw the current phaser for a lagging power factor to the reference factor phaser. Now add the volt drop caused by the resistive part of the alternator impedance. So there's the voltage, our angle, And this volt drop is co phasal to the current causing it. Add this to the reference voltage, tip to tau. Now add the reactive volt drop. This is perpendicular to the current causing it, and it must lead the current by 90 degrees. So there we are. And now we're going to add. This is due to the phase angle of the reactants in 90 degrees. The phase of volt drop is leading the current causing it. The phasor diagram is always rotating anticlockwise. Therefore, the reactance drop will lead the current by 90 degrees. There we have IAXS. And then the sum of this two is IAZS. Now let's look at the whole phasor diagram. The voltage IAZ is the phase sum of the volt drops IAZS and which is equal to IARA plus JIAXS. Finally, the induced EMF is the sum of E and IAZ. So there we have that part. Now we're going to add the induced EMF. And there we have E angle delta is V plus. IAZS beta minus phi because it's a lagging power factor. All right, now if you look at the leading power factor, same thing, draw the voltage phaser as this is the reference phaser. Draw the current phaser for a leading power factor to the reference phaser. Now add the volt drop caused by the resistive part of the alternator. So there we have the voltage and then the current leading, and IA, RA, there you can see. The volt drop IA, RA is in phase with the current. Now this is due to the phase angle of the reactants, IA 90 degrees. So the phase drop is leading the current causing it, the phase diagram it's always anti-clockwise, therefore, the reactance drop will lead the current by 90 degrees. Let's look at that. There we have IARA. Now, in order to lead it, it must be four like that. <laughs> and there's IAZS. And the voltage IAZS is the sum of all drops IARA and JIX. Therefore, E is E angle delta is V plus zero, V angle zero plus I M Z S beta plus or minus phi. Finally, the induced EMF is the sum of E and I A Z. There we are. I A R A, I A X S, I A Z S, and then E. Again, there's our equivalent circuit for a motor. Now the current is flowing towards the machine and IAZS is where the current enters the element that is the point of the arrow. 
So here we have E angle delta is V angle zero minus I A Z is beta plus or minus phi. All right, let's look. Draw the voltage phaser as this is the reference phaser. Draw the current phaser for a lagging power factor to the reference phaser. Current is flowing in the opposite direction, thus the phaser is reversed. So in other words, there, instead of going down, is not going up because it's in the opposite direction. Now I add the wall drop caused by the resistive part of the alternator, add the reactive wall drop. This is perpendicular to the current causing it. It must lead current by 90 degrees. So there we have IARA angle, and then IARA always in phase with the current causing it. IAXS must lead the current because it's 90 degrees perpendicular to it. So the wall drop IAZS is again the sum of IARA plus JIXS. Finally, the induced EMF is the sum of E and IAZS. There we are. So that you now for a motor, E is always lagging behind V. And for a leading, for a lagging power factor, E is less than V, opposite to that of the alternator where the current, when it's lagging, we have an induced EMF bigger than the voltage. So there we have E angle delta is V angle zero minus IMZS, angle beta minus phi. Now if we look at the leading power factor, voltage phaser as the reference. Draw the current phaser for the leading power factor to the reference. Because the motor is, it is a motor, the current is opposite to that of the alternator. And therefore the current will go in that direction. And now add the wall drop caused by the resistive part of the alternator impedance. It's in the same direction as the current. The reactants drop perpendicular to the current causing it, and the wall drop will thus lead the current causing it. So there we are. Current, wall drop of the IMIR, IX, and therefore, Finally, we will have IMZ and E. As can be seen, the induced EMF is now larger than the applied voltage. This is consistent with the fact that for a leading power factor is bigger than V. So the equation E is angle, angle delta is V angle zero minus IMZ is angle beta plus five. Now if we look at the silent pole alternator, there we have the two reaction theory. We have a direct axis reactance and a quadrature axis, axis reactance. The load angle is also unknown and we have to calculate that first using the formula E is angle delta is V, angle zero plus I A X Q. 90 plus or minus phi. We're not interested in the value of E. It is important to use the delta or the load angle. So now then we calculate the value of ID and IQ. To calculate ID and IQ, draw the start of a phasor diagram, determining the angle between E and IA by using the formula ID is IA cos and IQ is IA sine. Now this is wrong. Those two should be swapped. ID is IA sine. I'll fix that. From the phasor diagram, we developed the formula for the induced EMF. <coughs> Salient pole alternator, where we have IA, 
and delta. And then we have IQ, which is cofacial with E, and ID, which is perpendicular to, I, to E. Then we get the wall drop IARA. ID XD, which is parallel to E. IQ XQ perpendicular. And therefore, that is the angle phi. That is the angle delta. That is angle 90 plus delta. <coughs> so that the equation says E angle delta is V angle zero plus I A R A at an angle minus phi plus I D X D angle delta plus I Q X Q 90 plus delta. Now if you look at a leading power factor, calculate I D and I Q, determine the angle between E and I A. I D is I A sine phi minus delta and IQ is IA cos phi minus delta. From a phase diagram, develop a formula for the induced EMF. So there we have IA leading and E. Now we have IQ, which again is cofacial with E and ID perpendicular leading. So therefore, IARA is in that direction. IDXD is in that direction. And IQ, XQ. There we have IA at an angle of delta, of I mean. Then IDXD is 180 minus delta and IQ XQ will be angle 90 plus delta. And again, this that is right now. ID is IA sine and IQ is IA cos. And then we write the equation E is angle, angle V angle zero plus I A R A at an angle of phi plus I D X D angle 180 minus delta plus I Q X Q 90 plus delta. Lagging power factor again, calculate I D and I Q, draw the phasor diagram, determine the angle between E and I A. Again, we use the full phase E is in E angle delta is V that should be minus I M X Q 90 minus phi then I D again it's on I A sine I Q is I A cos from the phase diagram develop the formula for the induced EMF There we have a leading power factor, lagging power factor, sorry. And there's our angle, delta, which is IQ, which is cofacial with E. There's ID, perpendicular. There's E, IM, RM. ID, XD, again, perpendicular. Uh, parallel to ID to E, IQ, XQ, perpendicular. And there we have E. Now the angle that they have there is 180 minus phi. For ID, XD is 180 minus delta. And for IQ, we have the angle minus 90 minus delta. If we write then the equation, E angle delta is V plus IA, RA angle 180 plus ID XD 180 minus delta IQ XQ uh, minus 90 minus delta. Thank you. That will be all for now.